Over 60% of the of the of young adults in America report feeling seriously lonely. And two out of every five people in America reports that their relationships are not meaningful. And suicide rates in the last few years has gone up by 30%. We are so afraid of connection because of the ways that we've been hurt by it that we don't lean in and we forget that connection and friendship is a, uh, a nutrient uh, that is uh, vital for our biology, our psychology, and our spirituality. We can't live without connection. You know, connection is the cure. And Spiritually We is really um, emphasizing that, that um, also emphasizing from the spiritual perspective, but really looking at the data too, you know, from understanding that loneliness strikes in the body the same way that hunger does. But what do we do when we're hungry? We walk to the fridge, we order some food on, a, on an app or something, we walk over to the cafe, but we don't treat loneliness as a uh, vital nutritional need for our well being, which is what the evidence says that is like. Um, uh, a nutrient deficiency when we're not engaging connection and friendship, you know? So the call is to start with being socially integrated, start testing your material lightly, saying hi to the neighbors. Oh, nice dog, nice shoes. You know, I you look nice today or, or, or buying a cookie for, for someone and bring it to their, to the, to your doorman or to, you know, there's so many opportunities to, to, uh, train ourselves back into our ability to connect. And I just want to name one more thing too. I believe that technology uh, was built. I'm not a dystopian person. I'm a very utopian person. I'm very hopeful, enthusiastic about human life. But I believe the technology that really supported us to connect with everybody is actually doing the opposite now. It's severed our and atrophied our muscle for connection. We don't know how to say you look nice to someone at the coffee shop without sounding creepy. We don't know how to say, oh, wow, I, I, that was such a beautiful practice. I'm so inspired by you. And you just went through a 90 minute hot yoga class where you almost fainted seven times. But your capacity to still notice beauty and your capacity to name beauty when you see it, you know, um, all things that we've we've been severed from because of the phone. I believe that when loneliness strikes in the body, instead of us tending to it as a as a nutritional deficiency that we're lacking, that we must feed, we go to social media. We put on uh, another, we watch another episode, we eat another cookie, we do another thing to deflect and neglect ourselves of this biological, psychological, and spiritual need, which is friendship. So the book covers that. It's a, we, we, we paint the picture at the beginning um, of you know, all this evidence for why friendship is the cure, why friendship is a vital need. And then through the, the course of the book, we're sharing practices and tools and stories to help people um, understand that um, it's a dance and opening themselves up to see more you know, than than what meets the eye and know that their view isn't the ultimate view, that their perspective isn't the truth. It's part of reality, but not the truth. And and how we can uh, use a little bit of a, of a shaking up in our rigidity when it comes to connection and that the, the psycho, spiritual, somatic uh, world of restricted boundaries um, isn't helping you it's actually keeping you more isolated. And so just to underscore, I notice when you talk about our loneliness being like a uh, hunger, like starvation, that's so powerful because of course, if we saw people who were hungry, we would be inspired to feed them. And this is something that's within our power to reach out and feed each other with our love and attention and care. Okay, my final question, at the end of Spiritually We, you mm. say it'll just take 2% of us to have mm. this kind of mm -hmm. embodied Spiritually We 
mm-hmm. attitude and behavior in the world to mm-hmm. shift the entire world. And I mm-hmm. thought, really? Yeah. 2%? Tell me about that. And we'll end on this note. Thank you, Tammy, for bringing that into the mix. Um, the 2% theory is something that I spoke to Dr. Lisa Miller, who is the founder of the of the first Ivy League um, uh, institute within Columbia University of merging spirituality and uh, like mind, body and, and spirituality weave together. So spirituality and science. She's like sort of the godmother in that school, in an Ivy League school. So we can celebrate her work very much and so much gratitude to her. And what she says is that if we are able to live in this, uh, from this place of integrity, where our thinking, our our words, our actions, the way we interact, the way we, if we can match our ways of thinking with our benevolent nature, if there is like a uh, integrity and synchronicity in the way that we um, engage with the world from a place of love, if more people exist living in this from this place of integrity, the more it's that thing I shared earlier about, about how I don't open my eyes when I'm praying or when I'm meditating next to a patient at the hospital. I The more I do that, the more I practice existing from this place of integrity with my benevolent nature, the more we're shifting people um, consciously or unconsciously. People gravitate towards presence. We are like the, the, the moth to the flame. We are obsessed with presence. It really does the thing. It's like, it's the the greatest drug of all. I remember to share this just a little bit about it. It was when I when I sat with His Holiness the Dalai Lama, literally ten years to the day, first time, and I was it was in the Ramsala. I had just finished a ten day retreat, and we were sitting at the outside of the temple. There's maybe two hundred people there, and I remember, and I you know forced my way in through getting really close to him, and I remember just sitting and looking at my friend and saying, um, "She's from Australia." And I said, what is happening? I feel that I'm drugged. I feel so relaxed. My mind, the discursive thinking has stopped. I feel like my breath has, has gotten deep. I feel like my shoulders just soften. I feel like my jaws ah, dropped. I feel like my eyes just like, what happened? And then later on, I come to realize it's that when you're in the presence of these holy beings who are so regulated, so developed, it, it really invites everybody and someone so wild like me could actually even feel the the potency of that of that depth of regulation of the depth of of relaxation so when i think about the dalai lama and what happened to me 10 years ago and then talking to dr lisa miller uh you know mega boss scientist understanding this um it really feels like a hopeful world that we only need two percent. We don't need the whole world to to practice the Dharma. Um, we just need two percent of us to to live our values and and live by them and have a higher code of ethics. I think we've lost the plot with that a little bit. Yeah. Spiritually, we the new book by Sa De Simone, the art of relating and connecting from the heart. Oh. Thank you all for being with us. Sounds true. Waking up the world. 